welcome back to my channel. I am filming a tag video today and I'm really excited. This is the beauty community tag of 2017, I guess, technically. But of course I'm bringing it into 2018 because my butt did not get it done last year. And I feel like I've seen a lot of people do these videos still. So hopefully if you guys haven't done it and you are a YouTube creator, definitely go ahead and create the video and let me know because I'd love to check it out. Also, if you guys don't make YouTube videos, that's totally okay. Leave me the answers to these questions in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. I mean, that's what YouTube is all about. Now, this video series or tag was created by Lisa Stevens. She has a pretty decent sized channel. I actually was subscribed to her. Right now, she's almost at 40,000 subscribers and I believe she just started doing YouTube full time. So if you're looking for a Caucasian beauty guru to watch, definitely check out her channel. I will try to remember to link it down below. Really bad at doing that stuff. Now, really quick, before I start answering these questions, just a few announcements for you guys. My name is Karen. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe down below. I do upload every other day, so you do get quite a bit of content from me, and I hope that you will consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you are a longtime subscriber, you probably already know this, but there is a little giveaway going on on my channel. The link to that giveaway video is also going to be in the description box for you guys to check out and go ahead and enter. Just a little way for me to say thank you so much for following along with me on YouTube. And finally, I am trying to declutter my makeup collection. So every time I find something I want to purge for my collection that I feel like is gently used, I've been throwing it on my Poshmark. So if you guys are interested in shopping my Poshmark account, the link to that is gonna be down below as well. I also have a lot of other useful information like most of the time I remember to link what I'm wearing and stuff down in the description box. So definitely check that out if you have any questions or you can leave me a comment. I'd be happy to respond to you guys. So yeah, without further blabbering, let's get into this tag video. Okay guys, the first question is what are your favorite videos to watch? Now I've seen a lot of people actually do whole separate videos on their favorite kind of YouTube videos to watch. Which is kind of interesting, like, if you actually think about that. <laughs> like, does anybody want to watch a whole video about YouTubers talking about videos they like to watch? So I'll try to keep it short and simple. My favorite kind of videos are honestly, like, I love watching collection videos. I know some people think that's super obnoxious, but I love collection videos. I love seeing what people have. I love that feeling of like, oh, I have that too. Oh my god, that was such a great palette. Especially when you see some of the older palettes. Like, I don't have a very old makeup collection, but I have, I still keep like my first Urban Decay palette. Like, that was my first ever high end palette. So I keep that. I have my first ever naked palette, which I would never put on my eyeballs, but I keep it just for sentimental reasons. So it's really fun to see like palettes that have come in and out of your collection, and it's fun to see what other people have. So I love that. I love watching haul videos. I'm like an OG, like I love the old school stuff, the stuff that, you know, some people maybe not that interested in anymore, but I love hauls because I think it's so fun to see what other people are shopping for. I get ideas of things that I didn't even know I needed from hauls. Um, I do watch reviews sometimes, especially if it's a product I'm contemplating picking up and a lot of indie brands because I feel like they definitely don't get a lot of airtime on YouTube so I try to f find YouTube videos just so I know like what are the swatches looking like things like that those are very helpful gosh what other kind of videos do I love to watch I love to watch tag videos I love to watch like a few drama channels I do sometimes like to watch drama channels because I feel like it keeps me in the loop a little bit because I've actually gone through and unsubscribed to a lot of bigger youtubers so I don't always keep up on the drama these days but Hopefully that kind of gives you guys an idea. Yeah, honestly, I'll, I'll watch anything. It just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Now, the next question is, what are your favorite videos to film? For me personally, I really enjoy filming my swatch parties. I know that sounds really silly, but I get so many like positive comments from people when I do swatch party videos because to me, swatch parties are so handy. Like you see people doing like beautiful swatches on Instagram, but for me it's like, is that really how the palette swatch or did you doctor that up with primer, you know? So now I've seen a lot of people do like beautiful like stencil swatches and like my swatches are happening real time. Like you can see me like dip into the eyeshadow palette and just like swipe it. I know people say that's not the best way to judge a palette and I totally get that, but I also feel like when you are earning a particular salary every month, this is like one of the easiest ways for you to just decide like, hey, 
Does Karen think that palette swatch like really crappy? Does she think like maybe I shouldn't spend my hard earned money on it when I can only afford one eyeshadow palette a year? Yeah, I feel like they're handy so those are really fun for me to film. I love reading people's comments and like some people will say like oh my gosh I just bought that palette today or like oh my gosh your swatches really helped me see what it looked like on tan skin because I feel like a lot of big YouTubers get all of these palettes in PR but those like review videos have gone away and I honestly feel like Tati is probably one of the only big beauty gurus that still does reviews and I really appreciate her doing some form of review because they get so much makeup and I feel like Tati is really the only one that does it justice. Now I'm not saying Tati is like the end all be all of YouTube re reviews for me, but she's like one of those big standout channels to me that I feel like still does what old school YouTube used to do. So anyway, that was like a unintentional Tati rant, but for me, definitely, I love filming swatch videos. I still like doing reviews because I feel like people do think that's helpful. Plus, my subscribers and friends know that I buy all my makeup. Nothing is sent to me. So there's, like, no ulterior motive in here. I am just a regular person that loves makeup, that buys way too much makeup, and wants to help you guys decide how to make better choices. Unlike myself, apparently I don't know how to make better choices. What are your least favorite videos to watch? My least favorite videos to watch are honestly, I'm gonna sound like an asshole for saying this, but I do really like edited videos. I'm not saying like it has to look like a movie production, like lighting and this and that, but I do think there's something to be said about people that take the time to perfect the quality of their videos. And uh, so it's really hard for me, like if you're on like shaky cam or like your background is not, like it's not that hard to go to TJ Maxx and buy like a faux fur background or so. So I do really, uh, like I, I am a stickler for that because I know there's a lot of people that work their ass off to produce really good quality videos. But on the other side too, I'm kind of weird because I feel like Makeup Struggles, I know she does her best when it comes to her videos and for some reason she's like that one YouTuber, I don't care if it's like grainy as fuck, I'll still watch her because she's got like the best humor for me. So I love her, so I, I do, I would say like bad quality does kind of bug me. I feel like you don't have to spend a ton of money on good quality, but it does it does help when you put some effort. I've seen really well done videos that are filmed on iPhones and just like cell phone cameras so sounds kind of snotty but I'm really not trying to be. I just feel like that bothers me and then some of my other least favorite videos to watch. I really don't like watching people that do like tutorials that are all like PR stuff. I'm okay with it if you put it in the title then I just know not to watch it but if it's like oh, I got this for free, I got this for free. It's a little too much and some days I do sit there and wonder like what if I ever hit that point in YouTube where I'm at that really large subscriber base because you can't make everyone happy. It's true, you can't make everyone happy. Somebody's gonna find fault with you about something. So that is really scary and I know I've watched some of like the mid-range YouTubers like Samantha March, she came on and did this tag the other day and she was just like, I just hate the negativity, like people expect me to do this for free. So I get that because YouTube is really freaking expensive. Like if you want to do a good job and turn this into a career, like it's really expensive. So I get that they need to make their money and I appreciate people that can sit through and watch, you know, all these like PR filled sponsored videos. But yeah, that's going to be like a, a interesting bridge for me to cross because I feel like, yes, I would be so excited if somebody decided to send me something as PR, but I also wonder like how my subscribers or like my friends would feel like, would they then feel like betrayed? I know somebody left me a comment the other day. She's like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for you to get PR. I think you're so like honest. And I'm like, that's scary to think about. Like, that's really scary because I don't like watching videos that are full of PR. And honestly, it's not even YouTube. What I really, really hate is like all these like Instagrammers that are like Instagramming things and they never disclose that it's PR, but you can literally tell it's like, okay, that was sponsored. Like, come on. Because there's no like laws regulating that, but I think it's like something important for consumers to keep in mind. So, Oh man, I really hope I can just like be 
me and still accept PR and still have a channel that is growing, but I feel people's pain on that. I, I really don't know. So yeah, that's one of those videos that's like a little bit cringy when it's like a lot of PR. And I feel like once you go there, can you ever go back to being just like person of the people? You know, it's a tough one. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what any of that had to do with what videos I don't like to watch. Um, let's move on to the next question. What is your favorite part of the beauty community? I think my favorite part of the beauty community is that you can learn a lot on YouTube about makeup, really about anything. You can teach yourself so many skills. I think that's just an amazing thing about the world we live in now. But beauty community in particular, I think that there are some awesome people out there, especially some of the YouTubers I watch, I think are so cool. One of the people I really, really admire right now is Angelica. She's a Swedish YouTuber. And I just love her channel. She's like inspired me to think of color differently. And like I have this like a ridiculous eye makeup look on right now. And it might not be up to Angelica's standards. But this is like me trying to wear more color. I even like picked out some really crazy colorful vibrant eyeshadows in my collection. And I'm like I'm going to attempt to use these because... I want to try and play with color so I think it's cool because it's inspiring it's so fun to see people's dreams come true and their channels grow like that's amazing it's amazing to see the support it's amazing to see how loyal people's subscribers are I love meeting and talking to people that are subscribed to my channel I honestly get so excited some of the names I like remember like Britney's Beauty Bar there's a girl named Tracy that always comments on my videos Anna who is just the sweetest subscriber and just so many people and I'm sorry I can't mention everyone because I have the memory of like a freaking walnut but there's so many subscribers that I recognize their names and I honestly just want to give everyone a hug because I feel like it's so sweet when they take the time to watch my videos because I'm literally like a nobody on the internet and it means so much to me so that is my favorite part about the beauty community and I think it's a lot of people's favorite parts about the beauty community another thing because I've seen a lot of these tech videos already so I'm going to steal people's answers a lot of people said that it's nice to have somebody that loves makeup as much as you do and that's really cool and I have really found that in doing top five Tuesdays so if you don't guys don't follow me on Instagram I would highly recommend especially if you are a content creator please go ahead and DM me because I've formed a little group we're not huge we're, there's like maybe 10 of us and every Tuesday on Instagram stories we talk about our top five favorite products that week so it's just a fun way for us to create content on Instagram because sometimes I'm like on Instagram like I don't really know what to talk about you know what I mean so I feel like it's a nice way for me to bring some of the things I talk about on YouTube to Instagram because I have more followers on Instagram but I like YouTube because I get to like edit and I don't know there's like something so weird about the draw of YouTube versus Instagram whereas I know some people have made whole careers out of Instagram so it's definitely a preference thing but if you guys want to join me on top five Tuesday those ladies are so fun we talk about makeup we have like a little Instagram you know group where we talk about what we're gonna do and just discuss like makeup the stuff and yeah so I've really gotten to know some of those ladies and it's so so fun so please join us for top five Tuesday and shoot me a DM so I can include you on that. Okay, what is my least favorite part about the beauty community? I think my least favorite part is the fact that some people kind of just get away with a lot of shit because there's really no like laws governing like YouTube and I just don't know. It's it's crazy. I feel bad for consumers. I feel bad for myself because there's so many products I bought based off of YouTube recommendations um, that didn't work out. So I feel bad for people that have to spend their harder money on stuff that some people just got like paid to say was good and wasn't really good. The other thing I don't like about YouTube is I don't feel like there's a lot of diversity on YouTube. If you think of all the really big, big YouTubers, like in the millions, there's really not a lot of diversity up there. It's definitely dominated by a certain group. And I feel like it's a little bit sad to think that, like, I you got to move to L.A. and be at all the parties to be, like, in the millions, you know. And you have to have, like, the right purse. And you have to get your lips done. And you got to get your hair done. And you have to wear extensions. And so I feel like, 
I don't know, it's, it's really drama and it's a real production and sometimes it's not real. And uh, I think there's going to always be the people that love like the original YouTube that isn't like overdone. And then there's just going to be the masses that are drawn to bigger productions that watch YouTube like they watch TV. And it's not about the learning. It's about the drama of whoever they're following. So I don't know. Those are two of my least favorite things about YouTube. Okay. Number six, what motivated you to start your channel? So I kind of answered this in one of my Q&A questions, but what really motivated me is my background is in marketing. And I like to say that people didn't start learning about social media marketing until like, I feel like right after I graduated college is when Facebook really kind of amped up and like Instagram and YouTube and stuff like that. People weren't really doing it in when I was in college, like back in 2011. It's crazy how much the world has changed, but, um, yeah, so there wasn't really like social media internships, but it was something I really wanted to know more about. So I started off as a blogger and a fashion blogger, and I had this like silly little fashion blog that I was really into. And so I decided to make some videos for my fashion blog, which is still up on my YouTube channel. If you go far back enough, you'll see some of those cringeworthy videos. And so I did some of those. I'd always been on and off of YouTube, and I've had my YouTube channel for about seven plus years so I I wish I had stuck to it because you know I could have been the next Jacqueline Hill like we don't know you know <laughs> so anyway that's kind of what got me started is just wanting to know more about social media it wasn't like any one person or any one thing it was just me kind of wanting to learn more about media and different forms of media number eight number one thing you would change about the YouTube beauty community I can't think of anything like right off the top of my head, but I would say um, if I really, really had to, to change something, it would be like how hard people are on themselves and definitely also, I know they said one thing. Okay, let's, let's go with bullying. I think it's so sad how much the bullying gets to people. I haven't really had anything too major. The only time... It got a little out of hand was in my Pat McGrath Labs video. I think it was a swatch video and the actual review got a lot of views because not a lot of people got the palettes like right away. I think a lot of people waited until the palettes came to Sephora to buy them. And Pat McGrath had like such bad like shipping issues when the palettes came out, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I was one of the first people that had like a swatch party of all three palettes and things like that. And so there, I think a few more people, like different people were on my channel and people were just going off about like how I sounded ungrateful. And then my sweet like subscribers that had been following me try to like defend me and it was like really, really sweet of them. And so I was trying to defend myself and I was commenting back and I was getting a little bit irritated because there were a few people that just kept coming back and wouldn't really like accept what I had to say. And then you know what I did? I just blocked them because <laughs> honestly, it's like, you know what? It is my channel. I don't remember who it is that blocks people that are mean or weird. I know maybe some of the bigger YouTubers do it, but I I started doing it. I think makeup struggles. If you like act a fool in her comments, like she's like, it's fine if you disagree with me, but you can be nice about it. And it's like, you can, you can say whatever you want about me, but like when you're starting to like attack my friends on YouTube, like that's ridiculous. Like I am not that thirsty for a subscriber that I will let you like act a fool on my comments. So yeah, I think it's just like if you can't say it to somebody's face, like if you were standing in front of me and you couldn't say what you were saying on the keyboard, then don't say it on the keyboard. You know, that means it's inappropriate and you're about to cross the line. So just don't be that person. I have left comments. They're not mean, but like the other day, like I watched Samantha March's like beauty community tag and she was like, talking about all these like mean comments and bullies and stuff and I was like oh my gosh Samantha, I think you should make a reading people's mean comments like video I think that would be really funny I love your sense of humor I love how sarcastic you are I think that would be great and then like all these people are like oh my gosh I don't think she should do it that's just like a way to draw attention to people I'm like oh my god like go leave your own fucking comment like you don't need to comment on my fucking comment like 
I don't know. I just, I just feel like on those bigger channels, like I feel their pain, but also it's like, you know what? If somebody is saying something to you and you don't like it, just block them because once it gets out that you won't stand for people being nasty to you or your subscribers, then people won't act a fool. And who is it? Live Loves Her Makeup. She has a moderator and she's like, I don't know why bigger YouTubers don't spend the money on moderators. And it's true. It's like, don't sit there and complain about drama on your channel. Like, you're in control of what people see and just fucking block people that are swearing or, like, soliciting you for prostitution. Jesus Christ. Like, nobody needs to be harassed on the internet. Like, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. That's my thought process. So, I'm going to stop there before I offend anyone. But, okay. Number nine. Number one advice for other creators, new people starting out a channel. So I also answered this question in my Q&A question and answer video. <laughs> um, and I know a lot of people say like, oh my gosh, if you wanted to start a YouTube channel, just start, just do it, just do it. But honestly, it's like if you just enjoy watching YouTube and you think like it might be fun, I would say just like try it out on Instagram. Don't go through the hassle of YouTube if you aren't going to enjoy it. Don't invest in it until you're a little bit sure because honestly, like, it can be tough to kind of, like, see what everyone else is doing and then it's like, oh, well, I don't have that camera or I don't have that lighting and then you're, like, putting time and money into it and then you realize you don't really like it. I think that's the tough part because you see, like, I've been on YouTube for a long time and I've seen channels like come and go. I've seen really big YouTubers come and go and it can get old and there's days that I don't want to film. So don't do it unless you really want to do it because life is too short to be doing shit that everyone else wants to do. Like I feel like YouTube's become a trend. I've heard I think someone from it's an Australian YouTuber that talked about this and she was like I've heard in schools now that people say that they want to be YouTubers. Like when they ask people like, do you want to be a doctor? Do you want to be a lawyer? They say YouTuber because I think people think this is easy and it's not easy. <laughs> like I don't know like how people do it. Like I already said, I don't know how people do it with full-time jobs. I don't know how people do this raising kids. I have a lot of respect that for people that do YouTube as a hobby. If you do this full time, it like pisses me off that there's YouTubers that have just like hit the top and now they like upload every once in a while because they've forgotten about the reason they got to where they are. You know what I mean? And it's like when you have that many assistants, when you have that many like people on your production crew, it's like it's not that hard for you to throw out a few videos every once in a while, like every month or so. So Anyway, I just think it's not easy. Only do it if you really want to do it. Don't do it for the wrong reasons. Don't do it for the free makeup. Like, it, it's such a saturated market. And from a business standpoint, it's definitely saturated. If you can think of a new, innovative, creative, next big thing, do that. Because the age of YouTube is not now. If you wanted to start YouTube and do it for, like, a living, I feel like it should have been, like, years ago and I know there's people that like get recruited by these networks to be like YouTubers and like don't sign up for networks because they take a percentage of your YouTube earnings and it's it's all so silly so just do it because you want it do it because you love the makeup do it because you love to edit do it because you love to film do it because you love to talk about makeup you know that's my advice for you don't do it for the wrong reasons don't do it because people say oh my gosh you love makeup you should have a YouTube channel like no because it's a lot of fucking work and if you just like makeup and you want to talk about it once in a while, just do it on Instagram. You don't have to have a fucking production crew to talk about makeup products. You know what I mean? So that's my number one advice. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit pessimistic when it comes to YouTube channels and creators. Number 10, what do you love about YouTube as a whole? I just think it's cool. It's for me, I use it like it's my TV. Like I wake up with YouTube in the morning. I go to bed at night watching YouTube. I love watching some of these creators. They're so cool. Like I had already mentioned Angelica. I love the fancy face. I love makeup struggles. I love watching Live Loves Her Makeup. There's so many cool channels and Lauren May Beauty, like she's cool. So yeah, I, as a whole, I just think it's so fun and it's so fun for me to watch people evolve and grow and like see the crazy hairstyles. Like 
for me it's like someday I'm gonna be like old and gray and I'm gonna be watching my YouTube videos going like oh my god like really Karen like what what is that makeup look or like I wish I had that skin I wish I had the hair <laughs> like it's so funny and like sometimes I see like my older videos I'm like how was I so tan in that video like was it the lighting like it's just so fun to look back I think there's a lot of great memories for me on YouTube there's a lot of like videos that I take like personally on my phone and I'll upload them to YouTube but they're on private like I have a YouTube video where my friend proposed to his fiance I have you know our wedding invite was a YouTube video because we were cheap and it was a really cool idea actually so if anybody wants any money saving tips. So I feel like a lot of my life is documented on YouTube, not like vlogs and stuff, but even in the YouTube channel, like I started out filming in like an apartment with like my bathroom in the background and I filmed a little at like an ex-boyfriend's house. Um, you see us in like my apartment in a different room then we got married and it like my background changed now we're in a house and my background changed like it's really like really cool to see all of those changes and like how long your hair is like what what beauty techniques have changed for you what brands you've like stopped using or what brands you're like really into now so I think it's really really cool and that's my overall favorite thing about YouTube so anyways I feel like I've talked your ear off if you are planning on doing the beauty community tag please let me know I'd love to watch it I've been binging these videos and of course I'm gonna go ahead and leave Lisa's channel down in the description box if you want to check out the OG video and I hope you guys enjoyed this one leave me some comments let me know your thoughts also if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel down below Enter that giveaway because I want one of you to win that palette and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye guys!